hi guys welcome to or welcome back to my channel my name is Bahja. if this is your first time seeing my face then hey welcome to the channel and if you've been here before like always it is a pleasure to have you join us again we live in a world that literally weakens us it weakens us mentally physically emotionally spiritually in all aspects the world that we live in today weakens us it distracts us from who we are it blinds us of our potential it makes us feel purposeless and it really makes us feel like we need to depend on the outside we need to depend on everyone else we need to depend on our jobs we need to depend on our friends and we lost sight of our own selves i'm sure a lot of you guys know this but islam really is where i found my strength it is where i found my true self and it's given me a sense of purpose i started to indulge in self-help books, self-improvement books, self-development, mindset, um, learning about the brain, learning about the mind, learning about literally everything that I possibly could to develop myself, to make myself better. I made it my mission to take control of my life to the extent that I could, to change my narrative, to change my mindset, to change the way that I viewed myself and viewed my world. And because of that, I've been able to completely change my life. I went down the rabbit hole of the uh, that girl social media aesthetic vibe content whatever you want to call it and although i did find them extremely helpful within everything i found the teachings of islam literally in everything in every book in every video and i'm telling you guys i read like one two three books a month and i just became obsessed with learning about self-improvement psychology literally anything and everything that could help me understand myself and better myself and in almost every Every single one I found the teachings of Islam and so it made me curious and I'm someone who grew up with an Islamic background I literally went to an Islamic school and grew up in an Islamic school and so I have a good foundation and understanding of Islam but it made me curious to look into it and see it from a different perspective of how can I use Islam to better my life and I'm telling you guys it is literal perfection it is everything that you need to not only succeed in this life but in the next and you guys know my literal motto in life is smart girls work hard to succeed in this life but they work even harder to succeed in the next. It's these practices that don't take a lot of your time that will help you succeed in this life. These might not be things that you hear often, I feel like, and so I'm really excited to share them with you guys. Number one is daily prayer. This one is extremely obvious. As someone who like barely made their prayers just a few years ago, I'm not gonna miss my prayer. I don't like praying late because I've realized the beauty in prayer. Prayer is literally a gold mine. It is five times a day where you get to de-stress, where you get to leave all of your, and this is a tweet that I tweeted a while ago but leave your worries on the prayer mat okay five times a day to really just remove yourself from you know all the things that are stressing you out all the things that are currently bothering you upsetting you whatever it is it is a space in a place where you can just leave it all on the prayer mat leave it up to god say god i'm leaving you with all of this please take care of it for me and help me get through the rest of the day ask for guidance it is five times a day where you can ask for all that you want in this world ask and you shall receive okay it is five times a day getting up five times a day to pray is in the beginning really difficult but what really motivates me is just that idea of being able to go and speak to god and just leave all my worries on the prayer mat it's kind of like a reset throughout your day and once it becomes a habit your heart is so used to these five times a day where you're able to reset and remember god once it becomes a habit it's going to be a lot easier of course and so you won't have to like get up and push yourself to do it but what really keeps me motivated is just knowing that this is a time for me to you know reflect and not only reflect but just be real with myself and be real with god and you know understand what's bothering me throughout that day or whatever it is it just keeps you aware and conscious of your own self and it just reminds you of everything that you want and everything that you strive for and i think the prayers come at the most perfect time throughout the day okay next is a very easy one to implement and it's daily athkar daily remembrance throughout the day to remember god i do daily athkar in the morning and then in the evening and then throughout the day like whenever i get the chance i use the athkar app so if you guys are just beginning to 
incorporate adhkar into your daily routine which honestly is not shameful at all i feel like i feel like it's like oh if you're not doing the right things like you should be ashamed of yourself like everything takes time everything takes little steps and any habit that you want to achieve in life whether that's going to the gym eating healthy you know doing your skincare whatever habit that you want to start to incorporate you have to practice it little by little when we learn to walk we learn to walk little by little and so god knows this about us and so just be patient with yourself and don't judge yourself because judgment blocks growth you're not going to get up and do your prayers you're not going to get up and do your adhkar if you don't be gentle and patient with yourself but i use the adhkar app so every morning before i even get out of my bed i do my morning adhkar literally i love this app I'm gonna put it on the screen. I'm gonna link it in the description. I do, and you guys see this in my vlog, morning, I do my morning adhkar. It gives you every single adhkar, both the English and the Arabic um, translations. And you can read it. It tells you how many times you say it and you keep it pushing. And I highly recommend you guys understand the translation of what you're saying because it inspires you so much. It gives you so much motivation throughout the day. It makes me feel like there's really nothing that you can't achieve when you read the meaning. It is so beautiful. So I love that the app has both the English and the Arabic. And then I do my evening adhkar. And then there is the sleep adhkar. And then there's like the early morning adhkar. And so there's so much on that app. And I think it's just perfect. When you know who God is and you know know that he is with you throughout the entire day and you are asking for his protection and you're asking for his guidance throughout the day how can your day go wrong it absolutely will not like your day is going to be blessed you're going to seek out goodness and this is like something that i've learned about the islamic practices is it sets up your mindset and your heart in a way where you always seek good you always look for good you always you know look at things in a positive light and when you do that, you will start to experience life in that exact same way. You will become someone who finds good. You will become someone who, you know, when you're seeking good, you will find the good. What you seek, you shall find. What you seek is also seeking you. And so I learned that in these Islamic practices, it really, really, really sets you up for success, for a strong mind, for a unbeatable mind like nothing can ruin you when you have this strong foundation and this takes practice that car takes practice you know reminding yourself of these things take practice and so it's so easy to do it takes like five minutes in the morning but it sets you up with a strong mindset and a lot of you guys who watch my channel a lot of you guys who are here and subscribed on this channel want to better yourselves the girlies want to win the girlies want to succeed and i swear and i swear i swear these practices will help you do that okay next is another thing that i do both in the morning and in the evening and then throughout the day anytime i need it anytime i feel like you know i'm feeling down throughout the day but morning and evening i feel like if you have that set routine chef's kiss okay and so this is daily affirmations and dua i had a video of mine go viral on tiktok and instagram a few years ago a year ago i don't even remember when it what it was but um, you guys know how affirmations are extremely popular and for good reason. Affirmations are so important. Affirmations and talking to yourself well and speaking well is so important. And we see that in a lot of our Islamic practices where we say things like, mashallah, alhamdulillah, um, astaghfirullah. Like these are all things that are protecting you. You're speaking good. And when you speak good about yourself and you speak good about the world and you speak good about others, it builds this goodness in your heart and so affirmations have been extremely popular and i'm a big fan of them but i said you should make affirmations based on the 99 names of god every single morning for two years straight i have this on my notes on my phone and it's called daily affirmations and duas so i have my own list of daily affirmations i was a little shy to share it last year but i'm more than happy with sharing it with you guys today and so i'll put that in the description as well and i have a list of just duas places in my life that i would like to improve when you know where you need to improve you know what to ask for practicing and doing this every single day has helped me build trust with god because now i understand who he is and when you affirm that and you believe that to be true 
true and you think of God in that way throughout your day, God will show up like that in your life. And so you will experience peace. You will experience his, his guidance. You'll experience his love. You'll experience all of that if you affirm it to be true, if you believe it to be true. And so it took me a month, literally months of saying this every single morning without missing a single morning. And if you do, it's okay. Just do it again the next day. Like building habits isn't, you know, it doesn't come as easy as we think. Like it takes practice, but it has helped me so, so, so much. If you have goals, right? And the girlies who are watching this, we have goals. We are ambitious girls um, and guys you know, hey, we have goals, right? So wherever you feel like you're struggling in, whatever it is that you want to achieve, make a dua for it and put it on your phone, in your list. And every single day, every single evening, ask God for it. And of course, not just in this worldly life, but in the next two. So everything that you would like to experience in the hereafter, which I hope for all of us, the goal is Jannah, the goal is heaven, ask for it. When you're building your affirmation and dua list, you want to think about this life and the next. You want to have a vision for both. If you guys want to see how to build a vision for yourself, do, I'm going to link it in the below. Um, I have an entire few videos on this, and so I'm going to link them all down below, all the videos that I feel like is going to be beneficial to you guys. To, to ask for strength, you need to know what areas you feel a little weak in. And so self-realization, self-reflection is always really, really, really important. At the top of my affirmations and dua list, I have make it your mission to do one small good deed today for the sake of Allah and do not doubt the power of that. And so that is my next thing is to do one good small deed and I think it's better if you do it for someone else like if you do something nice at for someone else whether it's smiling at someone opening the door for someone um I used to make my sister's bed yeah in the very beginning I would be like okay I'm gonna do one small nice thing and I would make my sister's bed but yeah this will help you when you make that your daily goal and you have that one daily goal of doing something nice for someone this will help you become more conscious of the way that you treat others the way that you carry yourself in the world and it'll remind you like oh that one good small that one small good thing that you're gonna do today it just helps you remember God throughout the day it makes you happier it makes you feel a sense of like happiness and gratitude and so doing something nice for someone else is always so beneficial next is something that i feel like we're never really told is a habit or you know takes practice it's kind of like one of those things where um it's like oh you should have this period but no one really teaches you how to have god consciousness being conscious and aware of god at all times throughout your day and this takes practice Mm -hmm. this takes practice having taqwa which is having god consciousness remembering that god is with you throughout the day and at every single moment this allows you to become more self-conscious to become more aware this will allow you to be an observer of yourself of your behavior of your environment of your reactions of your responses it breaks you out of being stuck in your outer environment at all times being stuck in your circumstances and thinking Thinking that's all there is to life that's all there is to you which I feel like is something that a lot of us are struggling with and are stuck in is just like this worldly life this is all that we are being God conscious breaks you out of that it breaks you out of being paralyzed and distracted by everything around us and when you know how abundant Allah is you feel abundant yourself you'll start to realize how abundant the world actually is how beautiful the world actually is it allows you to recognize beauty within other people within animals and plants and nature and all of that because within everything you will see God you will begin to see the signs of God all around you when you make dua for something let's say you follow this this little all the habits that I gave you guys you wake up you remember God right you go about your day you start brushing your teeth whatever this is exactly what I do brushing my teeth moving on to doing my prayer my daily affirmations and my dua you are making dua every single day asking for guidance asking for love asking for peace asking for success if you are God conscious throughout the day you will start to see all of those du'as come to fruition you will start to experience God's guidance you will start to experience because you'll recognize that everything that comes to you whether you deem it to be negative or positive is from God and knowing that and having that 
sense of certainty, you will respond to things better. It will help you break free from that constant react reaction of like something happens and all of a sudden you're angry, you're yelling at everyone, you're being, you know, in this negative energy and in these negative vibrations. What that does is it it puts a stop to it. It holds you back. It rem when you remember God in a situation that might not seem the best, you will realize that this is from God. This is what's best for me. And it'll help you make better decisions moving forward. You'll realize that every idea, every resource, every tool, every opportunity is directly from God. It is from no one but God. But when you're conscious of him, you'll remember that. If you're not conscious of that, you will not remember that. And so you'll get lost in that outer world again. When when you remember that every opportunity is from God, you're going to make better decisions on it. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to jump at this opportunity. I'm going to take this risk. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, make the better decisions. It helps you be more present in that moment as well. You guys know that recognizing yourself, being an observer of yourself, understanding your weaknesses, understanding your strengths, all of that will help you, you exceed with that mindset and with remembering God, you will literally exceed at everything that you do. You will become less upset at when things don't go your way because you remember God and you're like, okay, it didn't go my way, but it's going God's way and I'm content with that because I believe that everything that is happening for me is from God and it is for my greater good. It reminds you that his wisdom is greater than anything that you could have possibly imagined for yourself. Oh, today didn't go as planned. Okay, we're just going to try again tomorrow. We're going to keep moving. We're going to keep going. This is God's plan. Hardships, trials, they come my way to strengthen me. This is God's plan. You feel me? It frees you from worry. It frees you from stress. It frees you from anger. All the things that keep us in shackles, that keep us from, you know, being the best version of ourselves that we can possibly be. All the things that keep us from, you know, starting the business, starting the podcast, starting the YouTube channel, it frees you from that. I promise you guys, the most probably important habit to have is God consciousness, is remembering God throughout the day. Out of everything that I've said, I feel like this one is just one of the most important, of course, prayer. Hello, that'll take you out of the fold of Islam. But taqwa, God consciousness, if you're God conscious, you're going to get up and pray. You feel me? You're going to fear him. You're going to, you know, out of love, out of that, you know, remembrance, you're going to get up and pray. Allah says in the Quran, do not be like those who forgot Allah, so he made them forget themselves. Those are the sinners. <laughs> you are honored. You are beauty. You are light. You are love. You are goodness. And you will not be able to recognize that if you forget God. The remembrance of God also helps you build tawakkul. Another thing that is just said Oh, put your trust in God. Have tawakkul, have tawakkul, have tawakkul. But we don't really realize that that takes practice. I'm telling you guys, it took months for me to be able to just surrender and let go. We have this need, and this is such a this is a human trait. This is normal, and God knows this about us. He, he created us, of course, but we have this need to control everything and having that need to control creates resistance and you will not make any progress towards your goal if you want to just hold on to it and control and control and control. When things don't go your way, you become frustrated and angry. That keeps you from being grateful. Tawakkul is being able to put your full and honest trust in God and when you remember him and you remember him and you remember him and you remember him, ultimately you will give up that resistance. You will surrender to his will you will surrender to his wisdom and you'll just let everything go and the moment you are able to do that the world starts to work in your favor everything comes to you everything that your heart truly desires that is good for you that is meant to you comes knocking at your door it doesn't take much effort when we realize that a lot of our affairs which if you're god conscious you'll realize a lot of our affairs is taken care of by God behind the scenes, okay? And all we have to do is let go and relax and, you know, do good and remember God and be in all these, you know, good, positive energies and everything that we want will come knocking at our door. And of course, I'm not gonna, I'm not, Bed is not gonna be the one to tell you that you don't really have to do any work. You won't put in the work, but it frees you. It literally frees you. Everything just melts away. Being God conscious removes you from the shackles of all the things that have us enslaved. The fear of other people's judgments, 
trying to find peace within other people, seeking validation, um, being fully reliant on your job, feeling like, it, you know, you need this job, you need this job, you need this job. <laughs> All these things are things that keep us enslaved. Our own fears, our own um, limiting beliefs, that's literally what it is, limiting beliefs, our ego, our insecurities, all these things have us in a chokehold. You'll realize your abundance lies in the creator's hands. So this keeps you from being jealous of other people, of seeing what other people have, and it makes you wholeheartedly be become grateful for Ooh, I think my lash is coming off. But it forces you to be grateful for all that you have around you. You'll start to recognize the beauty in every little mundane thing in your life. God said, and whoever is mindful of Allah, he will make a way for them and provide for them from sources that they could have never imagined. And whoever puts their trust in Allah, then he alone is sufficient for them. When we hear this, do we take this lightly? This is in the Quran. This is literally a promise that God has made to us. When you remember God, and I've experienced this in my own life fully and with your whole heart, rely on Allah and this takes practice. Fully rely on God, fully remember God. You will start to notice things come out of places that you could have never imagined. Yes, you hold a vision for yourself. Yes, there are certain things that you want and you imagine it to go a specific way, but God makes it, you know, come from places that you could have never imagined. Your pockets are getting thick all of a sudden and it's like, where did this even come from? Abundance comes from Allah. When you surrender to God, Things will come out of places you could have never imagined. Doors will start to open. Opportunities will present themselves to you. All of this control, control, control stuff, God is telling us, chill, chill. Just rely on me fully. When your reliance is on me, because a lot of times, even now, you guys, the reason why we are unable to do that is subconsciously we are enslaved by all of our fears, all of the um, things that could go wrong, wanting control, our egos, our desires, they hold us captive. But when you let go and, and when you only rely on Allah, things will start to move in the most beautiful way ever. Okay, number, I don't even know what number this is. This is number five, I think, number six. Number six, daily reflection and repentance. Every night before I go to sleep, every single prayer, I always ask for repentance. Or, <laughs> What? I always ask God to forgive me for the things that I'm conscious of and the things that I'm unconscious of, of the things that I'm aware of and the things that I'm unaware of. And it's like a clean slate. Even if you do it again and you mess up or human, anytime you repent and you ask for the strength to overcome yourself and you, you ask for the strength to overcome your nefs and your own desires and to help and ask God to help you overcome this thing that you keep going back to or this negative you know, the sin that you keep committing, he will come and help you, but you have to constantly show up and show that you care. When, when you have a good heart and you have a clean heart, you will feel the sense of heaviness. You will feel a shift in your heart when you are aware and you know who you are. You will feel the difference in your heart when you commit a sin. It's, it's, it's a different feeling. And so repentance is important. Every single night, ask for forgiveness before you go to sleep and make it a habit, okay? Every single prayer, make a one of the rakahs, your designated rakah to ask for forgiveness and then ask for strength to overcome yourself. But also daily reflection, the concept is very simple. You're a good person, you get good results, not only in this life, but in the hereafter. So you have to be aware of what's in your heart. Be aware of who you are, become observant, reflect on your day, what triggered you, what did you do that you're not very proud of, what did you do that you're very proud of, um, where can you improve? Just ask yourself these things. You have to become an observer, step out of your shoes without judgment, and observe yourself. How can you improve tomorrow? You have to hold yourself accountable before God holds you accountable on the day of judgment. Okay, that's the last thing you want. <laughs> You'll never know where you need to, you know, ask God to strengthen you 
unless you become aware of yourself. Repentance changes your destiny. It changes your outcome in this life and in the next, so do not take it lightly. Okay, last but not least is gratitude journaling. I think this is a very important practice. Honestly, when you become conscious of God and you become aware of yourself, you'll start to be just a more grateful person um, and you, you know, shift your behaviors from being reactive to being responsive you're going to just become an overall more grateful person and we know that if you're more grateful you will be increased in this life and in the next okay and so gratitude journaling i every single morning um sometimes i don't do it i'm not gonna lie but in the beginning is definitely a habit that i did every single day now it's like not every single day but i try to do this as often as i possibly can just write down three things that you're grateful for today that's it that's all excuse me i promise you guys start to incorporate these and you will see such a huge change in your heart in your life in your outer world when you start to work within and you start to work on your heart and you start to recognize yourself and your behaviors and you start to shift them and you ask for repentance you ask for strength and you make these du'as and you know you start to be more observant of everything around you your life will change your perception on life and your perception on yourself and your perception perception on God will change. It will shift. Okay. You will have the best of both worlds. Inshallah, you're going to live the best life that you possibly could live and also be rewarded for it. Every little thing that you do, as long as you have God consciousness can be a form of worship. You go to the gym, you brush your teeth, you're taking care of yourself, you're taking care of your body. You're, you know, smiling at someone, you're being nice, you're being kind. These are all forms of worship. It doesn't take that much out of us. It doesn't take that much out of our day. These are things that you can just incorporate at work, at the gym, at, you know, while you're hanging out with your friends. These are things that you can incorporate in silence. It's not things that you have to physically go out and do. It's not things that, you know, you have to, I mean, obviously prayer is, but it doesn't take that much. And I feel like as young people, I don't know, I don't know. There's just this idea, I feel like, that Islam is really difficult. Being a good Muslim is difficult. It just takes practice. It just takes showing up every day and showing that you care, showing yourself that you care, showing God that you care, and trying again and again and taking small steps and picking yourself up every time you fall, just like any habit. It takes practice. Even if I don't see the numbers on my business, if I don't, you know, eat in a calorie deficit like I told myself I would, even if my video doesn't get that many views, even if I don't get the, you know, work done, even if I'm not as productive in my work as I want to be that day, as long as I do these things, I feel content. I feel successful. I have built something for my akhirah. I have collected good deeds. I have done something, something to build a good hereafter. And so doing these things will help you stay on top of your worldly life. It'll make you more disciplined. It'll help you understand delayed gratification and how to take advantage of that. Free you from negative emotions that keep you stuck, that keep you fearful, that keep you from taking any action towards your dreams. It just makes your life so much better. It helps you so much in your worldly affairs, in your school, in your businesses, and then also in your akhirah. And so successful girls work hard to succeed in this life, but they work even harder to succeed in the next. And so I wish you guys the best of success in this life and in the next. I wish you guys the best of both worlds. I pray and I hope that you guys are able to see your potential and to use it and to make the most out of your life and to make the most out of your younger years especially. That's all I have for you guys today. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment down below. You guys, let me know if you guys want a part two. And I love you so much and I hope to see you next time.